who co-pastors Lakewood with him, took us on a tour of what they call their worship facility. The ceiling changes colors. Isn't that neat? Isn't that beautiful? And it changes during the songs or however we program it. Really? Yeah. And this is like Hollywood stuff. <laughs> now, what do, you, do you call this you oh, call the podium. pulpit? We need to call it a podium. No? Pulpit is an, is an old school kind yeah, of. Yeah, I would say podium. This does have a concert feel to it. It does. Does that distract from the message? I don't think so. I think it helps people be engaged. Engaged and generous. Osteen can afford all of this because of the money the church brings in. But he doesn't solicit contributions on television. Why don't you ask for money during your television broadcast? We didn't want anything to distract people when they were watching to try to turn off the message. Because we know how people are skeptical of TV ministers. Hey, there's a guy who just wants my money. That's what. I didn't want any of that. But you do want their money. Well, we need people to support us or we can't stay on, but we don't get on there and ask for it. And it's amazing how people can see that you, when you're genuine, uh, they send money. Buckets of money. Over 43 million a year gets collected in the church. Another 30 million or so comes in the mail. It's a cash cow and a family business. Osteen's brother, sister, and mother are ministers in the church. But the real money for Osteen comes from his book sales, which are repackaged versions of his sermons. His latest book, Become a Better You, for which he reportedly got a $13 million advance, goes on sale tomorrow. They read more like self-help than religion. In his new book, Osteen lays out seven principles he believes will improve our lives. To become a better you, you must be positive towards yourself, develop better relationships, embrace the place where you are. Yeah. Not one mention of God in that, not one mention of Jesus Christ in that. That's just my message. There is scripture in there that backs it all up. But I feel like, Byron, I'm called to help people. How do we walk out the Christian life? How do we live it? And these are principles that can help you. I mean, if there's a lot better people qualified to say, here's a book that's going to explain the scriptures to you. I don't think that's my gifting. Good to see you. Wherever he goes, people tell Osteen hey, sir, that he helps them. Hey, how you doing? Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. What you do? You've changed my whole life. Uh, oh, I'm so glad it's hell. God bless you. God bless you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. God bless you. I'm a Roman Catholic. I'm Jewish. We sure. listen every Sunday. Well, night. thank you. Oh, oh my God. Look how beautiful you Thank you. But many theologians from mainstream churches find Osteen's message misleading and shallow. I think it's a cotton candy gospel. Reverend Michael Horton is a professor of theology at Westminster Seminary in Escondido, California. His core message is, God is nice, you're nice, be nice. <laughs> it's sort of a, a uh, if, if it were a form of music, it, I think it would be easy listening. He uses the Bible like a fortune cookie. This is what's going to happen for you. Uh, you're, you're, there's going to be a windfall in your life tomorrow. Uh, the Bible's not meant to be read that way. Reverend Horton believes Osteen tells only half the story of the Bible, focusing on the good news without talking about sin, suffering, and redemption. And Reverend Horton goes even further. He levels the harshest charge of all, calling the Osteen method of teaching heresy. It is certainly heresy, I believe, to say that God is our uh, resource for getting our best life now. Because? Well, it makes religion about us instead of about God. There are a lot of people in this country, religious people, who consider your theology dangerous. I don't know what can be so dangerous about giving people hope, causing people to have better relationships. I'm not leading them to some false god or something like that. Hear what some other, others have said about you. He's deluding and dumbing down the Christian message. Sometimes you have to keep it simple and not make it so complicated that people don't understand. But I know what I'm called to do is say, I want to help you learn how to forgive today. I want to help you to have the right thoughts today. Just simple things. 